we present Howard Marion Crawford, Roger Delgado, and Margaret Whiting in Poison for the King by Victoria Saldu. Translated and adapted for broadcasting by Norman Ginsbury and Jacques Sarch. Plot to poison the king. And it fell to me, Honoré Griffin, of all people, to stumble on it when I came to Paris a fugitive in the year 1680. The splendors of the court in Versailles were the wonder of all Europe. But in the background, there were sinister forces. If King Louis XIV himself yielded to no one in his worship of God... There were members of his court who yielded to no one in their worship of the devil. Even one of his mistresses turned to the black arts when her fortunes were on the wane. Although I was not uh, in favor with the authorities, I decided, come what might, to enter the lion's den. And I called on Monsieur de la Reine, Minister of Police, at his offices in the Châtelet. Sado! Monsieur, the reports of the night watch, please. Here, yeah, monsieur. Uh, read them. There's quite a lot, monsieur, but this is the most interesting. What is it? A letter from the confessor-in-chief of Notre Dame. He says that the father's confessor in Paris are horrified by the number of women who confess that they have administered drugs or potions to their husbands. Well? The husbands all died, monsieur. What is even more serious... The Church of St. Paul has sent us another letter referring to a plot to poison the king. What, another one? Yes, by the friends of Monsieur Fouquet. We've given up all hope of getting a pardon for Monsieur Fouquet while the king is alive. Mm. No other clues? None. Excuse me, monsieur. Yeah, what is it? There's a gentleman to see you. All right, Sargo, you can go. Now, who wants to see me? Uh, Monsieur Griefer. Oh, let him see Monsieur Sargo. He insists on seeing the minister for police. He says, Monsieur Barreigny, or no one. Mm. He says he has some very important information for you. Uh, what does he look like? Quite a good appearance, Monsieur. Uh. Honest, I should say. Very well, send him in. Yes, Monsieur. This way, if you please, Monsieur Griefer. Thank you for seeing me, Monsieur. I haven't much time, Monsieur. You say you've some important information for me. Highly interesting information, Monsieur. Excuse me, but may I know a little more of whom I'm speaking to? My name is Giffard. Uh -huh. I'm an abbey, too, but I'm not in holy orders. I see. Well, I inherited a large estate. I led such a riotous life that I went through my fortune in five years, and then I became a pamphleteer. I wrote articles for the Mercure Galant. Yes, 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 but what about this important information? I'm just coming to that. On the 26th of June, 1678, I was living in the Rue Saint-Louis-en-Lille. Mm -hmm. I went out for a walk. When I came back, I found my home full of police. Monsieur Sago was in charge of them. They searched my furniture, took away all my papers, and brought me here. Unfortunately, I was not interrogated by you, monsieur. I was confronted with a paper in which I made comments for my own amusement on the court and some of its personalities. Within 24 hours, I was sent to Toulon on the orders of the Marquis de Louvois and condemned to serve in the galleys for five years. The galleys? I have come here, monsieur, straight from the galleys. You were uh, given a part? Oh, no, I escaped. You escaped? If you were chained naked to a sea day and night, frozen with cold, roasted in the sun, fed on black bread and rancid oil... Ah, uh, you'd have escaped, too, if you'd been given the chance. I dare say, but I'm afraid it's my duty to send you back. Without a hearing? I'd like to find out more about this. Monsieur? Uh, tell Monsieur Sargo to bring me the file on the Abbe Griffard. Yes, Monsieur. How did you manage to escape? Well, uh, we ran aground on the rocks off the island of saint honorat near Antibes. Some of us managed to jump into a boat belonging to the monks there. We reached the mainland and... I made for Nice with another prisoner. He was killed on the way by some peasants who were giving chase. Yeah, I see. Here is the file, monsieur. Oh, thank you, Sargo. Now, uh, Honoré Griffa, pamphleteer. Five years in the galleys for criminal libel. For libel? May I know who accused me? I've never been told. You hear, Sargo? You accuse yourself, monsieur Labbé. I? This letter is yours, isn't it? 
Yes, yes, I, I wrote that to my sister. I never finished it and I never posted it. No, it was a most unusual case. You must have been writing in front of your window. Yes, I was. And then you went out? Yes. And your letter blew out of the window. Into the street? Where it was picked up by a parcel of... I see. Who took it to the commissioner of police. Ah, filthy. Who caused inquiries to be made there and then, and this paper came to light. Together with a number of letters from Amsterdam, which led us to believe that Monsieur Labbé was corresponding with the pamphleteers of Holland, who are His Majesty's bitterest enemies. Never. Uh, Give the Abbé a seat. Oh, thank you, monsieur. Uh, Leave us, Sago. Monsieur Griffard, would Monsieur. you mind reading out this passage in your letter? Hmm? The beginning here. As for oh, news... Oh, yes, 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 yes. As for news, my dear, there's nothing very interesting... except that the Marquise de Montespan has just presented the king with her seventh child. As her husband is still alive, the child will be legitimized like his six predecessors. The superb little chateau at Clagny, which His Majesty had built for the Marquise, is now to be converted into a palace, large enough to house the royal brood. <laughs> the lady's husband is suppurating with indignation, but his father is beaming with pleasure. <laughs> he regards his family's name and fortune as well and truly made. Well, uh, what do you think of that, monsieur? Well, I think the same as you, judging by your little chuckles of approval. You're wrong. My chuckles signified approval of your sentence. I see. Well, perhaps it was too severe. Yes, yes, I I agree it was. Mm. Now, what is this information you want to give me, and what do you expect in return? In return? Mm. I don't even expect to be paid for my furniture that was sold to swell the coffers of the treasury, nor for my watch, which was, uh... Impounded by Monsieur Sago. <laughs> did Sago impound your watch? <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> but I want nothing except my release and the right to come and go freely and safely. I wouldn't call that excessive. I hope you'd agree. I do. Well, what now? Now, Monsieur, I may have to assume the role of a spy for the police. What? I don't relish it, but I happen to have a conscience. And if I don't do something, I become an accomplice of murderers. An accomplice of murderers? Yes, monsieur. Of the people who murdered, among others, the Duc de Savoie. You know who they were? My fellow prisoner who escaped with me told me quite a lot. His name was Carloni. He was deeply involved. Uh, Go on, monsieur Labbé, go on. Well, there is a secret society of these murderers. They work for their own ends or merely for money. Now and again, you manage to apprehend one of them, but the organizers always elude you. I think I can show you how to cast your net and draw them all in. Uh, how are you going to do it? I think I've discovered the headquarters. Well, well I'll so fast, monsieur, not so fast. At the moment, I only have clues. I must follow them up. And we must be careful. We mustn't let our quarry take fright. I'm mingling in a world which I never knew before, and I'm discovering quite a lot. In 24 hours, I shall know much more. I shall be able to say... This is the place where the murders are planned, and these are the murderers. And then I shall withdraw and leave the rest to you and uh, Monsieur Sago. You'll need help from Sago, won't you? Yes, someone. Monsieur? Uh, Tell Monsieur Sago I want him. Yes, Monsieur. Have you heard anything about this society and the king? No. I've been warned that Monsieur Fouquet's friends are planning to murder him. Ah, Sago, listen carefully. Monsieur Griffard, some very valuable information about the people we were discussing before his arrival here. I want you to carry out, to the letter, the instructions he will be giving you. Monsieur Sago, will you go with your men to the Porte Saint-Denis tomorrow morning at... uh, uh, What time do you make it now? Uh, Five past ten, monsieur. By my watch? (laughs) Your watch? Uh, No, monsieur, that is my watch. Don't you remember? (laughs) Your... uh, Yes, uh, perhaps. Uh, Sargo. Yes, monsieur? Uh, give the watch back to Monsieur Labbé. Uh, Certainly. <laughs> now, monsieur. Thank you. Ten o'clock tomorrow morning. Is that all? For the present, yes. And now, Monsieur de la Reine, may I go? Why not? And good luck. Thank you. Well, what do you make of that, Sargo? I shall know perhaps tomorrow. Monsieur, the Chevalier de Trollage is waiting to see you, monsieur. Ah, my nephew. Uh, show him in. Yes, monsieur. This way, monsieur. 
Ah, Hector. Monsieur. All right, Sargo, you may go now. Have you come straight from Saint-Germain, Hector? Uh, no, I happen to be in Paris, so I came to pay my respects. I'm glad. I wanted to see you. You're going to get some very plain speaking from me. Yes, monsieur. Now, I made you secretary to Madame de Maintenon, didn't I? You did, monsieur. And I'm very grateful. She's grown quite fond of you. Yes, she seems to be. But just when you're on the road to fame and fortune, you take it into your silly head to make up to whom? Uh, I don't know, monsieur. Oh, yes, you do. You fell in love with a certain Mademoiselle Dormoise. You seduced her and promised to marry her. Then she became lady-in-waiting to Mademoiselle Fontage, and you transferred your affections to Mademoiselle Fontage. Well? Well, I didn't think you'd be very pleased if I did marry Mademoiselle Dormoise. She has no family and no fortune. Never mind about Dormoise. I'm asking you to bring your association with Mademoiselle de Fontage to an end. For one thing, you're poaching on the king's preserves. Besides, if Madame de Maintenon hears about it, you will be dismissed. And that will be the end of all our hopes for you. Oh, monsieur, let me explain. There's nothing to explain. But let me tell you this. Of the three women who are rivals for the king's favors, Maintenon is the one who's going to win. The Marquise de Montespan has had her day. She's too arrogant, too ignorant, and too extravagant. Fontan is already in a precarious position. Her health is poor and her looks are beginning to go. And the king has no patience with women whose looks are beginning to go. Now, Madame de Maintenon has health and beauty and intelligence. She despises the ladies of the court and makes no secret of it. Mm, His Majesty calls on her every afternoon. They're together for several hours. Precisely. She is the future, I tell you. So follow her star, my boy. And your future is assured. Thank you, monsieur. I shall break off all connection with Mademoiselle de Fontange. Good. And as for Mademoiselle de I Dormoise... think you'll approve of what I do, monsieur. We'll talk about that some other time. Are you going straight back to Saint-Germain? Not till this evening. I'm dining with the Duchesse de Bouillon, and then we're going to visit Madame Voisin, the clairvoyant. Madame Voisin, my boy, if you take my advice, you'll have nothing to do with such people. La Voisin's establishment consisted of a luxuriously appointed house in the fashionable Rue Beauregard, which was not surprising in view of the elegant clientele who sought her out. What did surprise me was her appearance. She was matronly but attractive, and over her ample figure she wore a crimson velvet robe encrusted with silver eagles and lined with ermine. Oh, yes, she was soothsayer to the life. I say, who's the girl in front of La Voisin's door? That's Jeanne. She's on guard. La Voisin's keeping us waiting a long time, isn't she? If you want to make certain, you have to make an appointment long in advance. Have you ever consulted her? Good heavens, yes. Does she do anything else apart from telling fortunes? She's a clairvoyant. Oracle, wise woman, everything. She reads cards, crystals and stars... She advises on the law, arranges loans, and finds you excellent servants. You tell her everything she wants to know about you. Oh, <laughs> you sneer at everything. Why do you come here at all? Madame Voisin could do without your custom. I come to see the lengths to which human credulity can be stretched. Um, who's that fellow over there with the grey hair? The fat one? Yes. It's the Abbe Guibourg. Oh. He's always here, so devout to... Uh, the other man in the red wig is Monsieur Lesage, the astrologer. Oh. Ah, here's Madame Voisin's daughter, Marguerite. Ladies and gentlemen, my mother asked you all to excuse her. Oh, will be able to see anyone else today. Oh, oh, oh no. no, that's no that's you. Right. Oh, she yeah, shouldn't have kept us waiting if she didn't intend to see us. No. It's disgraceful. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, no, no, no. mother is just as upset as you are, but she's very tired and not well enough to see anyone today. Draw the curtain, Jean. Yes, mademoiselle. You can come in now, mother. Have you got rid of them, Marguerite? Every single one. Oh, thank heaven. They're grumbling. Oh, let them. If I didn't make them wait, they'd never come back. Now, help me get this tiara off. Oh, heavier than the king's crown. Oh, bring me some of that wine, Jeanne. I deserve it. Yes, madame. 
Oh, look, Mother, here's a list of the people who've been and gone. Oh, the Count Candace, huh? Eh? Yes, he's coming back tomorrow. Oh, he expects too much. Not only would he like his brother to die in his sleep, but his sister-in-law to fall in love with him. Your wine, madame? Oh, thank you. Oh, what's this? A man from Toulouse? Yes, he wouldn't give his name, but he wants a potion for his wife's lover. No, he does, does he? Uh, what did Madame de Pouillalon want? Well, she only came to say that it worked. Her husband? Yeah. Oh, there's the bell. Peep through the spy hole. Oh, it's a friend, Mademoiselle Desuyers. Well, show her in. Are you alone? Yes. Uh, keep her watch on all the doors, Jean. Yes, madame. Well, Mademoiselle Desuyers, did the Marquise de Montespan send you? Better than that. She's on her way here now. I came on in advance to warn you. She had a violent quarrel with the king about La Fontaine yesterday. Quarrel? Yes, that's why she's coming here. She needs your help. Oh, well, I've helped her before, and I'll do it again. By the way, on my way here, I passed someone else who was coming to see you. A woman. Warn Jeanne. Mm -mm. Jeanne? Yes, madame? Uh, listen to this. How shall we recognize her? She's wearing a pink silk cape with green embroidery. Do you hear that, Jeanne? Let her in and no one else. Very well, madame. Uh, who is she? Mademoiselle Dormoise, lady-in-waiting to La Fontaine. Oh, why is she coming to see me? You know the Chevalier actor de Toilage? Oh, yes. He was in love with her. Then she entered the service of La Fontaine, and her lover fell in love with her mistress. Oh, I see. You know nothing about this, of course. Well, of course. Well, why not make use of this girl to remove La Fontaine once and for all? Mm, I had thought of that. But the Marquise de Montespan is no murderess. Elixirs, potions, drugs, yes. But poisons, no. Why consult the Marquise? <laughs> You must induce Mademoiselle Dormoise to confide in you. That's the first thing. Later. That must be the girl now. I'd better go. I'll go through the garden. Oh, very well. Au revoir. Jeanne, look through the people. It's a woman. Is she wearing a pink silk cape? Yes. Trimmed with green. Oh, it's Dormoise. Open the door. Madame, can I help you? I wanted to see Madame Voisin. I am Madame Voisin, but I never see people as late as this. Oh, forgive me. I'll, I'll come back. But the still, time. as you are here. Oh, I'm most grateful, Madame. I've heard such wonderful things about you. Oh, sit down, my child, and tell me what's the matter. Thank you. Something is troubling you. I can see that. Oh, yes, and it's more than I can bear. Oh, let me read your hand. Yes. You've had a great disappointment, a very great shock, isn't that so? Yes. Yes. You want to know if there's any hope? Yes. Yes. Well, we shall see. The, the other hand, please. Yes. Now, look at me straight into my eyes. Yes. Oh, my child, I can see your heart is breaking. Oh, the tears you have shed. There's a lover, yes. Someone at court. Oh, my poor child, what do I see? Yes, you've been good. Too good to him. Oh, tell me the truth, madame. Tell me. I, I must know. It's all over, isn't it? He's not in love with me anymore. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Not so fast. Let me look again. Oh, good gracious, the love line, extraordinary. No, 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 the break is not complete, oh. not at all. You mean he still loves me? Undoubtedly, but there's another woman, a woman with red hair. That's right. Not a very nice woman either, but a great figure at court. And so beautiful, too. Fated and admired so much, how can he hesitate between us? Every day he's drifting further away. Every day I love him more and more. I pretend not to notice anything. If I reproached him, he might turn against me altogether. And, and then, heaven alone knows what would happen to me. I'm so unhappy. <laughs> oh, but you mustn't give away like that. Everything will be all right again. Oh, do you think so? Oh, tell me, will he come back to me? Oh, wait a moment. Just a moment. I 
I can't see, Clara. What is it? Has he become her lover? No. No, he hasn't. Are you sure? I'm quite sure. I'd have known if he had. How would you have known? When you're in love, you always know things like that. Then you must fight for him, my dear, and I have something that will help you. Oh. It will take him away from her and bring him back to you more loving than ever. Oh, tell me, madame, what? Tell me quickly. It's a potion. A potion? Yes, a love potion. You must mix it with something she drinks. But supposing it harmed her? It won't. It's a love potion. No. No, I can't do that. But... No, I wouldn't dare. I'd risk taking it myself, but I couldn't give it to her. But if... Give me something to take. But that wouldn't work on her. But then you must think of something else. This is the only way to control but it can't be will. right. It, it's black magic. Oh, well, my dear, if you think that. Look, please let me explain. There is nothing more to I'd that. rather be patient and wait, even if I do suffer. Very well, then. Wait and suffer. Oh, forgive me. I've made you angry. I'd better go. What do I owe you? Nothing. Only if you'll come back. I shall never come back, madame. Goodbye. I'm sorry, madame. I can't see no one. Oh, there's someone there I must avoid. Oh, he must have seen me coming here, madame. You can go out through the garden. Thank you, madame. Thank you. Mademoiselle, the Duchesse de Brion and I have come to consult you. Will you please open the door? Monsieur, I am very flattered, but I'm much too tired. I must ask you to excuse me. Madame. I have reason to believe Mademoiselle Domoise has been here. I don't know. She didn't give her name. It was Domoise. I saw her through the grill. And so did I. You must excuse me, madame. I have nothing more to say. Oh. <laughs> well, that's the Chevalier Hector de Trallage, is it? Impetuous young fool. Let him find out for himself where the girl is. Oh, dear. No rest at all. Yes. May I see Madame Voisin? No, Madame Voisin won't see anyone else today. Madame Voisin will be more than willing to see me when she hears my news. Monsieur... I come to see her about... a legacy. A legacy? Oh, well, come in. Come in, come in, come in. Ah, so this is the witch's father. And are you Madame Voisin? I am... Did you say something about a legacy, monsieur? I did. Ah, an abbé. Has everyone gone, Marguerite? Yes, ma'am. Well, then leave us, please. Uh, sit down, do. I prefer to stand. No. About the legacy. Whose is it? Madame, you know as well as I do. But I don't, monsieur. What, a clairvoyant who can read the stars? Or a crystal or a palm with unfailing accuracy. That's different. Here's my hand. Read it and tell me who I am, where I come from, and what my business is. Certainly not. As far as my <laughs> own affairs are concerned, I'm pilot. <laughs> In other words, my dear Madame Clairvoyant, you're a fraud. Oh, but a very nice fraud. Nice and plump and deep. <laughs> <laughs> Carloni told me all about you. Carloni? Yes, it's Carloni's legacy I'm talking about. Uh, is he dead? He died in my arms. Uh, in prison? No, in a meadow, as a matter of fact. He had escaped with me. And you were... Comrades in chains. Uh, you were, were you? Well, tell me, what did he leave me? The casket. The casket? Yes, the one in your garden, behind the seat. Oh, uh, so you know. Yes. I inherited it with you. Uh, don't I get it all? Greedy, aren't you? You say you share it with me, but what's in it? I have forgotten. Well, then, let's refresh your memory. A thousand ducats, golden ducats. Where is your proof that you're entitled to a share? Aha, uh -huh, share. Let's be accurate. If he left it all to you, you clever girl, he wouldn't have bothered to tell me anything about it, would he? Oh. Haven't you anything in writing, a signature or something? A signature? When we were running for our lives? Shall I remind you where the money comes from? Oh, heavens alive, it's so long ago. It's his share for his part in the murder of the Duc de Savoie. Did he tell you that? My dear friend Carloni had no secrets from me. Still, he might have left me more than a half share. No, 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 no. You're not going to try and swindle me, are you? You seem to be doing quite well. 
judging by this room. Uh, quite well, but not well enough. Oh, well enough for a woman who lives by a wit. Oh, you can say what you like. I sell talismans, feed beauty secrets, and remedies for every sort of ailment. <laughs> Do you cure the ailments or bring them on? <laughs> <laughs> I satisfy my patients, especially the women. For example? Oh, I never divulge names. It's unprofessional. But if you could only see them or hear the things they are. What kind of thing? Oh, how to inherit as quickly as possible from Mama or Papa, how to win at cards, how not to grow old, and how to rid themselves of their husbands so as to marry their lovers. Aren't you afraid? Of what? Please. Oh, I don't give a fig to the police. Too many prominent people are involved for the police to make trouble. Besides, the devil looks after his own, doesn't he? I rely on him quite a lot. You believe in the devil? Yes. You believe in God? Yes. How do you manage to keep on good terms with both of them at the same time? To each his due. Oh. I go to Mass on Sunday, I go to confession twice a year, and I fast on Fridays. But for good business and a good time, give me the devil. You'll be damned. <laughs> I'll repent at the last minute and God will forgive me. Oh, here I am, chattering all about myself. What about you? Why were you in prison? Oh, forging. Funny. Oh, waste of time, more trouble than profit. I've given that up. I'm preparing something on a big scale now. What? Well, will you keep it yourself? Yes. You swear? I swear. It's the murder of the king. What? You two? Two? What do you mean? Has someone else told you about it? Told me about it? I've been asked to do it. Well paid, too. Very well paid. I could retire on what they're going to pay me. I wonder if we're employed by the same people. Mm, who are your people? Friends of Monsieur Fouquet. Mine, too. Uh-huh. Do you see them often? Every day, since my escape. Oh, the rats. They really suggested... Yes, yes, yes. They approached me first. They must have thought you were taking too long about it. Oh, it's not so easy to poison off a king. Oh. Every mouthful of his food, every sip of his wine is tasted before it gets to his lips. Mm -hmm. And his plate and cutlery are kept locked up in a coffer. Yeah, but, um... He might stop for a drink when he's... I'd Hunting. Oh, even then, an accomplice is necessary. I have one already. Who? Why should I tell you and run the risk of Why your... Why don't we do this together? And what would your contribution be? I'll supply the poison. You? <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Some cheap stuff from the apothecary which has to be administered about ten times before it starts doing its work. Well, what would you use? I have the only poison worth using. What's that? The poison of the body, yes. Oh, that? Well, you can suggest something else if you like. Oh, no. No, I don't think we could improve on that. Uh -huh. it, hmm? it would be very pleasant if we could work together. Would it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm rich, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and what with the money I've put aside? The money we'll get from this affair and the money in the coffer, uh, which I haven't allowed to rot in the <laughs> earth, <laughs> I'll be able to buy a sweet little place in the country and we mm. can grow cabbages together. <laughs> Just you and I, my dear. Dobby, chubby, Abbey. <laughs> well, and all because I like you so much. <laughs> you simply know, I dear, how much I like you. <laughs> well, yeah, it sounds a very good idea. You agree? I'll uh, give me time. It's circles. To begin with, you're going to dine with me. Uh, not tonight, my dear, when I'm. Seeing Fouquet's friends, we've lots to talk about. Then come back after dinner and spend the night with me. Uh-uh. It'll take us all night to prepare that Borgia poison. Uh, 
Tomorrow night, if the invitation still held. Oh, it's always held. <laughs> Dinner tomorrow, then. Tomorrow. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, it's quite remarkable the way I've taken to you. <laughs> I've never taken to anyone else so What's that? Oh, no, it's all right. They're friends. You must meet them. Uh-huh. Marguerite, come in. Abbe Guibourg, come in, all of you. Uh, what's the matter? Uh, uh, this is the Abbe Guibourg, oh, my daughter, fine. Marguerite. Oh, and my maid, Jeanne, this yes. is the yes. Abbe Griffard, who has just brought us the sad news about Carloni. What about Carloni? He's dead. Dead? Our poor friend. Uh, Marguerite isn't Lesage here. He left some time ago. Without telling us, oh, fool, I needed him. Don't open, don't open, not yet. Put up the shutters. No, 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 uh, don't go, Monsieur Griffard. Uh, Wait in there, all of you, in, in, in the other room. Someone very important has called. She doesn't uh, want to be seen. She's wearing a mask. Who is she? Oh, see, she's someone from the court. She used to be all powerful, but now she has a couple of rivals. Ah, uh, but who is she? Go in there with Gibourg. You can kill time playing cards. He's an expert. <laughs> it looks it will play chess. Give him something to drink, Jean. Yes, ma'am. Uh, no, 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 I never drink between meals. <laughs> Join them, Jean. Yes, madame. Who is that man, Mother? Mm-hmm. Griffin? Mm-hmm. <laughs> An adventurer, my dear. I'm entertaining him for my own purposes. He's trying to rob me of my part in the king's murder, but I can work faster than he can by dawn tomorrow. See who that is, Ring. It's Mademoiselle Desiree. Oh, very well. Open the door. The Marquise is here. I've sent everyone away. Don Juan has been here. Well? Oh, stupid little thing. Waste of time seeing her. Well, never mind. I'll show the Marquise in. Will you come in now, madame? I'll leave you here with madame Boisin and come back in an hour. You're sure we're quite alone, Boisin? Quite alone, Marquise. Let me take your cloak. What magnificent ermine. Mm. Where can I put this mask? I'll put it on the table. Here. Thank you. Oh, here I am again, was I? I'm worried to death. What is it, Marquis? The king tried to quarrel with me yesterday. All over that dreadful Fontange. Mademoiselle Fontange? Yes, what a scene. Three days ago at Villa Cotteret, she was trying to show herself off as a dancer. It's a ridiculous Everyone was sniggering behind their fans. And then she complained to the king that I had been laughing at her. The the king was so angry with me that I cried all night. Oh, my poor Marquis. Oh, well, sir. The king doesn't love me anymore. Oh, Marquis, you've said that before, haven't you? This time it's true. No, 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 no. And all because of a creature I was stupid enough to throw into his arms. You? Yes. He always likes fresh fruit. So I produced Mademoiselle Fontage. She's an unentity, I thought. I'll be able to control her and the king. Well, till he gets tired of her. And then? Then she showed what a mean, spiteful creature she was. She had the insolence to reproach the king for spending so much money on me at Clung. But that proves how much he still loves you, Marquis. Doesn't prove anything of the sort. He wants me to retire gracefully. So he's gilding the pill, that's all. But it's not only La Fontange... You'll soon get tired of her with that awful red hair of hers. It smells just like a squirrel. <laughs> oh, it's not Fontange I'm afraid of. It's the other one. Mm-hmm. She's going to supplant both of us. Madame de Maintenon? Yes, and she was my handiwork, too. I forced the king against his will, mind you, to make her governess to our children. Well, how could I know that the king would fall in love with a handmaid? And now he's going to make her a marquise. A marquise, if you please, like me. Well, marquise, you must fight. That's why I'm here. There's only one way. It's never failed. A black mass. Yes. Remember our successes in the past. The first black mass got rid of Mademoiselle de la Valliere and sent her into a nunnery. The second one resulted in the birth of your son by the king. Yes, it brought the Duc de Man into the world. And the third one brought the king back after you had become estranged. You remember how he picked you up in his arms and carried you straight off to his bedroom? Mm, Of course I remember. It was my greatest triumph. Now, tell me, could I have a proxy at the mass? 
Couldn't my lady in waiting take my place? No, Marquis. Against such redoubtable antagonists as La Fontange and La Maintenon, your presence is absolutely indispensable. It's so distasteful. You can wear your mask, Marquis. And no one will know who you are except me and my daughter. Are you sure? Of course. Your name will never be mentioned. But who will say the man? The Abbe Gibourg, he always does. And Lesage? Yes, Lesage will be server. Well, Marquis? Very well, if I must. I suppose I must. It's essential, Marquis, I assure you. But when? And where? Well, here. And now. Can it be arranged as soon as that? Yes. I foresaw it, and I've made all arrangements. You were so clever, was I? Uh, Marguerite! Uh, we shall have to prepare the potions tonight, Marquise, after the ceremony. My daughter will take them to Mademoiselle des Oeillis at Saint-Germain. Very well. Marguerite, get everything ready upstairs. Yes, Mother. Is Gilou still with you, Marquise? Yes. Uh, then he must mix the potion with the king's drink, just as he has always done last thing at night. I see. Now, will Marquis go upstairs and join Marguerite? My mask. Let me put it on first. There. I'll join you soon. Thank you. Monsieur Griffard, you may come back now. I'm glad Your friend, the Abbé Gibou. Even cheats a chest. <laughs> <laughs> well, where is the great lady? Shh, shh, shh. Gone up there. Ah. It's a good thing I made you stay. Well, You're going to take the place of Lesage. Take the place of Lesage? Well, yes, in our black mass. Black mass? <laughs> do people still practice that sort of thing? Obviously. And what part do I play? You come in with a black candle. And stand behind the masked lady, that is all. Masked lady? Yes, she'll be lying down. Mm. She won't see your face. In fact, she thinks you're Lesage. Don't say anything. One word even might give you away. As soon as it's over, blow out your candle and go. We won't need you to prepare the potion tonight. And how long will the service take? Uh, don't worry, the time will pass quickly <laughs> enough. <laughs> We're ready, Mother. Uh, we're coming. Is Gibourg with you? Yes, Mother. What's he got to do with it? He's going to officiate. Come along. Take this candle and follow me. Gibourg and me to Abbey. <laughs> what more could the devil do? The events of the night sickened me. And I was glad that Monsieur de la Reynie had suggested that I should go to the Grotto of Thetis at Versailles the following evening. The grotto was lit by the flames of a thousand candles and torches. Oh, it was a beautiful evening. Moving through the cypresses and the statuary was a pageant of silk and brocade. All the beauties of the court were there, awaiting the arrival of the king for a fat galant. Isn't the grotto pretty by candlelight, Monsieur de Lavoie? Ah, Marquise, I'm delighted to see you. We heard you went very well. Oh, I had migraine yesterday, but I'm feeling very well now. I hear that Mademoiselle de Fontange is still quite ill. Oh, she can hardly walk, Monsieur Colbert. Oh, poor thing. She really should keep to her bed. Good evening, Monsieur Griffard. Ah, good evening, Monsieur Larigny. I've been looking for you. I've been looking for you. Sago told me you wanted to meet. You wanted me to meet you here. My congratulations. You've worked miracles. You've heard the news about the arrest of La Voisin? Yes. And the black mass last night? Yes. <laughs> they scarcely had time to get rid of the evidence. All because a certain lady at court wanted to remove her rivals. Mm. Well, that was all I managed to glean from La Voisin. You didn't recognize the lady? No. 
she wore her mask the whole time. The chances are she's probably no more than half a dozen steps away from you now. Aye. Uh, she didn't see you, did she? No, monsieur. I was standing behind her, holding a lighted candle, when she suddenly got up and a drop of candle grease fell onto her shoulder. I blew out my candle and made for the door while the others were crowding round her. She wouldn't know you then? No more than I'd know her. Would you recognize her voice? Uh, she only spoke three words the whole time. When the candle grease fell on her, she cried out, you clumsy fool. All I can tell you is that she's medium height, mm -hmm. good figure, well, well covered, no longer young, fair hair. Ah, uh, La Voisin knows who she is. No doubt. As far as I'm concerned, Monsieur Larigny, my task is finished now. I've, I've put you on the track of the conspirators. Saigo knows their names now. He knows they were inspired by Fouquet and that they were aiming to kill the king with the help of Voisin. So now, Monsieur, I, I would like to withdraw from the whole affair. I, it's for you to finish it. You can't go yet, Monsieur. I may need you. Still. For a short while, anyway. And we must get back to work. Is the news still secret? No, the more you talk about it, the better. All right, then. Ah, the visé. <laughs> oh, the Mercure Galons, he's over there. <laughs> I'll start with him, then it'll soon be all over the town. Good. <laughs> ah, my dear visé. Isn't the Amicry Fire? Surely not. Yes, it is. Oh, he thought you were dead. Well, here I am. I've been away. Business? No, 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 pleasure. <laughs> Have you heard the latest news from Paris? The arrest of the fashionable clairvoyant. You don't mean La Voisin. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, Voisin. Why? For practicing witchcraft and selling poison. Forgive me, monsieur. Mademoiselle. Did you say that La Voisin had been arrested? This morning. Are you sure? I was present, mademoiselle. Thank you, monsieur. Pray, pray excuse me. Who was that? Well, Mademoiselle Desiree, a friend of the Marquise de Montes. Ah, He's a friend of the Marquis. And now, yeah. you excuse me, while I spread the news. Uh -huh. Why does it matter to the Marquis that La Voisin has been arrested? Could she have been one of her clients? Ah. The Zayé is telling her the news now, and she's not taking it as well. <laughs> you think her own daughter has been arrested? Oh, no, no. Smelling salts, no. What was it, Wasn't I said? Uh, someone from the court? She used to be all powerful, but now she has a couple of rivals. Mackie has a couple of rivals. La Fontange and La Martin. And the potion for the king. I wonder. I wonder. Good evening, Mademoiselle Domoise. Good evening, Mademoiselle Desoyers. Hot, isn't it? Yes, it is, isn't it? I'm getting some orange juice for the Marquise. I am getting some iced milk for Mademoiselle de Fontange. Mademoiselle de Fontange is looking quite pretty in this light. She's beautiful in any light. She's not very well, unfortunately. <laughs> Every happiness has its price. Excuse me, Mademoiselle. I must go back to the Marquise. And I to Mademoiselle de Fontange. Now, you, wait up. Monsieur... Get me an orange juice, eh? Yes, monsieur. That woman of the black mask. Medium height, good figure, well covered, no longer young, fair hair. And certainly a good description of the Marquise de Montespan. Oh, we have here to speak. That might tell me something. Your orange juice, monsieur. Hmm? Oh, 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 thank you. I... Wait a I want you to do something for me. What, monsieur? I want you to trip against the back of that woman's chair. That that, that woman over there. What? The Marquise de Montespan? Yes, I'll give you five francs. I wouldn't dare. Ten francs. Well, monsieur, I'll try. <laughs> now we'll see. And if it is you, I'll be well advised to keep it to myself. Come now, let's watch. Is there? Oh, <laughs> Ah, now we know. That's the woman. Are you feeling better now, Marquis? You mean about La Voisin? Well, I was certainly shaken. We'll have to send her a message. She can't open her mouth. If she keeps quiet, we can save her. King. 
I can see the king. He's coming through the tree. He's coming into the Good evening, messieurs. Your majesty. Good evening, marquise. Your majesty. Too much perfume, marquise. Much too much. Your majesty. I shall change it for the jasmine with which Madame de Montenor overpowers the court. Your majesty has never been known to complain about that. That happens to smell very sweet in my nostrils. Madame, messieurs, pray do not let me interrupt your pleasures. <laughs> Mademoiselle de Moise. Oh, Henriette. Yes, Hector? I must talk to you. Very well. Speak very quietly. We mustn't draw attention to ourselves. I saw you leaving La Voisin's house yesterday, didn't I? Yes. You avoided me, didn't you? I didn't want you to see me there. Why not? I was ashamed of my reason for going to see her. What was the reason? Tell me, Henriette. You know perfectly well. You went to consult her? Yes. Did you expect any serious revelations from her? When a person is in despair, she'll cling to anyone who can give her hope. You went to that adventurous when you should have come to me. To you? I think I'd have been more of a comfort to you than that woman. Hector. I'd have told you that I'm thoroughly ashamed of the way I've treated you. Oh, Hector, if I could only believe... Oh, believe me, my darling, believe me. Look, Mademoiselle de Fontaine has fainted. Oh, I must go to her. What is the matter? Mademoiselle de Fontaine has fainted, Your Majesty. Oh, move away, please. Right away, everybody. Keep her air. Smelling so serious. Undo her body. Now, the doctor's here somewhere. Call yeah, the madame, doctor. Madame. Dr. Doctor. Madame, Dr. Doctor. 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 Make room, if you please. Make room, please. Your Majesty, what has happened? Mademoiselle de Fontaine has fainted. Well, she's not very strong, poor woman. It might have been the heat. She was complaining of the cold. Are you in pain, madam? Where is it? Oh. Here? Ah. Mademoiselle Dormoise gave her some iced milk. Did you? Oh, yes, monsieur, she asked for it. And after drinking it, she... Oh, a few minutes after. Well, she must go to bed at once. Uh, lift her in the chair. <clears throat> now, that's right. Carefully now. I'll look after you. Doctor, surely you do not think that... Who can tell, Your Majesty? Your Majesty, it's exactly what happened to Madame de Montenor after she drank that chicory water. Just a minute, Mademoiselle Dormoise. Yes, Your Majesty. Where did you get that iced milk? At the buffet, Your Majesty. It never left your hands? No. Where is it? Um, on that little table there, Monsieur, what's left of it. Waiter, put this dish away in a safe place. It's not to be emptied and not to be touched by anybody else. Yes, that's it. Surely nobody suspects me of... You seem very keen to defend oh. yourself, Mademoiselle. At present, no one is accusing you. But Your Majesty... Go I home! Have... And await my orders and those of Monsieur de la Reynie. <gasps> Minister of Police. Oh, God, they do suspect me. Ladies, you may retire. <laughs> well, Monsieur Griffard, did that incident suggest anything to you? Only Monsieur de la Reynie. But a person who is sick shouldn't drink ice milk. Nothing else? Nothing. Has it occurred to you that the unknown lady of last night might be... Mademoiselle like... Dormois. No, monsieur, it certainly wasn't Mademoiselle Dormois. It's not her voice, nor her figure, nor her age, nor her coloring, nor anything else. I have very good reason for thinking that Mademoiselle Dormois is not over fond of her mistress. Well, I know nothing about that, but I do know that the woman at Voisin's Black Mask was not Mademoiselle Dormois. No, we'll soon know. I'll keep you informed. Au revoir, monsieur. Au revoir. Uh, forgive me, monsieur l'abbé. I'm afraid you're going to think me extremely inquisitive. Oh, madame la marquise. No, no, no. <laughs> Put it down to my feminine curiosity. I heard you mention the clairvoyant voisin. Isn't that her name? Yes, marquise, it is. And I thought I heard you mention some ceremony or other at her yes, home. Yes, yes, marquise. Uh, black mouth. Oh, really, monsieur? <laughs> Things like that can't go on now, can they? Ah, uh, Marquise, they can and they do. You amaze me. Desiree, did you hear that? Yes, Marquise, I did. Astonishing, quite astonishing. But uh, how do you know, monsieur? Oh, a friend of mine was present 
Last night's matter, I tell La Voisin. Your friend was joking, surely. Why should he, Marquis? I wondered if he was one of the two priests who officiated. Uh, did I say there were two priests? Everybody knows there are always two priests. Yes, of course, Marquis. But the um, Abbe Le Sage, the usual server, didn't happen to be there, and uh, La Voisin had to replace him at the last moment uh, by my friend. And was it your friend? Who held the candle in place of Le Sage as it was. It's a breach of confidence, but after all, a witness is a witness. La Voisin is a rogue. And as for your friend... You must remember, Marquise, that he didn't expect to see what he saw. Nor would I give you, dare give you the details. Once he was there, he had to stay there. Besides, he was fascinated. Uh, there's no other word for it. Does he know who the woman was, the heroine of the adventure? He hasn't told me that. She was masked, I suppose. Masked? He couldn't have seen her face. No, he didn't see her face. So he doesn't even know who she is? Well, he thinks he recognized her. Oh? A few minutes ago. Yeah, in this very place. How did he do that? Oh, her height, general appearance, beautiful fair hair. Most of the women here tonight had fair hair. That's true. But there was her voice, a uh, rather proud and imperious, very distinctive. Even though she took good care not to open her mouth. How could you have recognized her voice if she didn't open her mouth? Oh, she spoke three words, but they were enough. Is that all? No, 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 something else. The devil, it seems, is accustomed to mark the flesh of his devotees. Well, he didn't forget this time. My friend was so worried and his hand was trembling so much that he inadvertently allowed a drop of hot candle grease to fall on the lady's shoulder. And the lady has had to hide the burn under a beauty patch. Dozens of women were wearing beauty patches here tonight. And if your friend had no better evidence against her... Against? I suggest... Against her, Marquis? What are you saying? He has no intention of causing a scandal. You mean that? Ah, there's a solution. Is there? Well, he's prepared to hold his tongue if... If his silence is paid for. Quite so. I thought that was coming. And what does your friend want as the price of his silence? Nothing for himself. <sighs> Nothing. No money? No preferment? Nothing. I don't understand. My friend only wanted to satisfy himself about the lady in question so as to testify, if necessary, in favor of another lady. Who is the other lady? Mademoiselle d'Ormoise. She suspected quite wrongly of having tried to poison Mademoiselle de Fontaine. Wrongly? How do you know that? I do know, madame. But the suspicion against her is strengthened because Monsieur de la Reynie thinks that Mademoiselle d'Ormoise was the woman of the black mask. Really? Hmm. What an extraordinary thing. It's quite likely that la voisin may be prevailed upon to suppress the truth and confirm Monsieur de la Reynie's suspicions. If that were to happen, the poor girl would be lost. Unless... Unless? Well, unless the great lady with whom she has the privilege of being confused uses her influence with the king to have the matter hushed up. In which case? My friend would feel satisfied and would obliterate from his mind all memory of the lady at the Black Mass. And otherwise? He will tell the whole story. To Monsieur Larini? To the king. Without corroborative evidence? <laughs> you have enough of that. <laughs> The burn, perhaps. Does the fool think the king will believe him? A fool does. Well, then, you'd better tell him that if he doesn't wish to be burned alive or drawn and quartered as the accomplice of Wazin, he'd better lie very low and hold his tongue. Good night, Monsieur Labbé. <laughs> Sardo, monsieur, has the Abbey Griffard been here? Not yet, monsieur. I'm expecting him. Let me know the moment he arrives. Yes, monsieur. Monsieur le Marquis de Louvois and monsieur le Marquis de Colbert have just arrived. Ah, the king's minister, Sardo. We mustn't keep them waiting. Send them in at once. Will you come in, monsieur? Good morning, monsieur. I've just arrived from Saint-Germain. His Majesty told me that you would be calling on me. 
His Majesty is commanding Monsieur Colbert and me to take part in the interrogation of Mademoiselle Dormois. I have ordered her to be brought here. I'm sure you will be pleased to know that Mademoiselle de Fontange is out of danger. But an attempt was made on her life all the same. I hear it was an Abbe Griffa who first brought this secret society to your notice. Does the King know about this Abbe? The King knows everything. He even knows about the uncanny ceremony which Monsieur Griffa witnessed. I'm presenting the Abbey to the King tonight. His Majesty wants to ask his own questions. Monsieur le Chevalier de Trollage is here, Monsieur. Uh, bring him in. Yes, Monsieur. Enter, Monsieur. Uh, my nephew, the Chevalier de Trollage. Your servant, gentlemen. Hector, this is Monsieur le Marquis de Louvois. Monsieur. Monsieur le Marquis de Colbert. Monsieur. Uh, my nephew is here as a witness, if necessary. Uh, sit down, Hector. Uh, uh, tell me, uh, Monsieur Sago, has La Voisin said anything yet? No, Monsieur, not a word. As a matter of fact, she seems quite calm and self-possessed. But uh, there's an explanation. We found a note on her. All it said was, keep a still tongue, we will protect you. Mademoiselle Dormois is here, monsieur. I'll send for her shortly. Yes, monsieur. Hector. Uh, monsieur. I found out that you called at La Voisin's on Saturday afternoon, just as Mademoiselle Dormois was leaving. I did, monsieur. Well, let me tell you that she is facing a very serious charge because of that visit of yours. Oh, but monsieur, she could never harm anyone. We'll she... soon find out. Monsieur Sargo, will you bring Mademoiselle Dormois in here? Yes, monsieur. This way, mademoiselle. Uh, you may sit down, mademoiselle. Thank you, monsieur. I don't think I need remind you of the charge against you. Last Saturday afternoon, you called on Madame Voisin. Yes, monsieur. Monsieur de Trollage called on her later. Yes, monsieur. Did you avoid him? Yes, monsieur. Why? I... I went there because of him. But he knew nothing about it. But what was the object of your visit? I was broken-hearted, monsieur. I went to consult Madame Voisin. I wanted to know if I had lost my... my lover forever. He was in love with another woman. I thought so, monsieur. And quite naturally, you were jealous of her and full of hatred. Jealous, yes, monsieur, but I never hated her. You ask Madame Voisin for an elixir or potion. Oh, no, monsieur, no. She suggested giving me a potion for, mem for, for the other woman to drink, but I refused. Did you go back to Madame Voisin at eight o'clock that evening? I, monsieur? Yes. No, I never went back. Where were you at eight o'clock that evening? In the church of St. Roche, I went there to pray. Did you see anyone there you knew? Someone who could testify that you were there? Not that I know of, Miss So Mr. you've no proof that you were there, eh? Do you know what the black mass is? I know that it is something horrible in honor of the devil, but that is all I do know. We have reason to think you were present at Madame Voisin's at this devil's mass. Me? And the oh, no. poison you poured into Mademoiselle de Fontage's milk the next day was given you there. Oh, that's a lie, monsieur. Oh, and it's ridiculous, too. Mademoiselle de Fontange is a sick woman. If I had wanted to poison her, I could have done it when we were alone without arousing anyone's suspicion. It would have been madness for me to give her poisoned milk where everyone could see her and hear her cry out. You didn't expect it to work so quickly. <laughs> milk taken from the buffet would not be suspect oh. like a potion given to her oh, in bed. Oh, God, if you go on christening everything like this, who wouldn't be found guilty? You deny that you went back to Madame Voisin's that evening? Of course I deny it. Sargo, bring in the witness. The witness outside. Mademoiselle? Mademoiselle Marie de Lady-in-waiting to Madame la Marquise de Montespan. Mademoiselle, please tell these gentlemen exactly what you told me about Mademoiselle Dormois. Well, monsieur, on Saturday night I was doing some errands in Paris. Getting on for nine in the evening when I saw Mademoiselle Dormois coming out of the Rue Beauregard. She's lying! She's lying! Mademoiselle Desiree, will you swear you saw her? I swear that the woman I saw was Mademoiselle Dormois. And I swear she's lying! Why? 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 What harm have I ever done you? Oh, what reason should I have for lying about you? Why don't you confess, Van Lee? I have nothing to confess. Don't make it necessary for us to take stern measures. If you? you torture me, I'll say anything you want me to say, but it won't alter the fact that I am innocent. Enough, enough. Uh, Sargo, take her to the Bastille. No. No, I won't go. Don't touch me. I'm innocent. I swear it before God, I am innocent. Sargo, see that she's oh. taken to the Bastille and come straight back no, here. No, no. Hector, have pity on me. Don't let them take me away. You know I could never try to kill anyone. Tell them. Tell them, Hector. Uh, 
I, I can't. Oh. Now you believe it, too. Take me away now. Take me away. You may leave us now, Hector. Let this be a lesson to you. I'll never forgive myself. Well, monsieur, are you satisfied that Mademoiselle d'Orbois is guilty? Monsieur de Louvois? Yes. Monsieur de Colbert? Yes. Then we won't keep you any longer, Mademoiselle de Verrier. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you, monsieur. Good day. Huh? Monsieur Grépois! <laughs> my dear Mademoiselle de Verrier. I don't think you should leave us like this. Let me pass, Monsieur Griffith. Why, well, it's our Abby. Come in, come in, Monsieur Griffith. Don't let that woman leave here. <laughs> What's all this about? No one can explain that better than Mademoiselle Desaillers. I? Mademoiselle Desaillers? Yes. She will tell you that last night in the Grotto of Thetis, I had a very revealing conversation with a very important lady, and as a result, I thought it wise to report it to you. Ah, oh, good day, Mr. Sago. Uh, well, Sago? I'm sending Mademoiselle Dormois away under escort. Good. Uh, now, Mademoiselle, what have you to say to the abbey? Don't believe a word that man tells you. I'm not going to tell them anything. I'm going to leave it all to you, Mademoiselle. This man is a criminal, monsieur. He has sworn to destroy us. <laughs> ah, yes, go on, my dear. Go on, tell them everything. You devil! Destroy <laughs> whom? Who is us? Me and... And who? Who? The Marquis. The Marquis? The Marquis? The Marquis? Yes, the... He's threatening to denounce her for her part in this affair. What? The ah, Marquis? Now, monsieur, you know. Thank you, Mademoiselle de Zeuillet, for having spared me the trouble. It's absurd. The man must be mad. Monsieur Larani, will you read this deposition by Madame Voisin's daughter? Uh, excuse me a moment, monsieur. Uh, take uh, Mademoiselle de Zeuillet away, Sargo. Are we to set her free? No, she's to remain in custody. Uh, what? Uh, the lady in waiting for the Marquis? Monsieur, I complain to the Marquis. Take her away. Very well, monsieur. I tell you, I complain to the Marquis. Take her away, Sago. Monsieur, Madame Voisin's daughter has been interrogated. I'll read what she said. Question. Where were you when your mother was arrested? Answer. I had gone to Saint-Germain with the potion prepared that night after the Black Mass. Aha. Uh -huh. Question. Who did you take it to? Answer. To Mademoiselle de Zergier. Question. What was the potion? Answer. A love filter to preserve the king's love for the Marquise de Montespan. Good heavens. It's incredible. The Abbe Guiburg has been questioned too. He confesses that he said the mass in question on that Saturday night for the Marquise de Montespan, who was wearing a mask, and that he has said it several times during the last six years. Uh, Madame Voisin's daughter and her maid confirm the facts, dates, and details. Monsieur Griffin, Monsieur do you formally accuse the Marquise? Was she the masked woman of the Black Mask? She certainly was. Have you told her what you know? I have. Did she admit it? No, no. Ah, well then. I should have said not intentionally. She gave herself away. When she realized what she'd done, she threatened to have me drawn and quartered if I as much as breathed her name. Mm. I think we should discuss this in private. Uh, would Monsieur Griffard leave us for a few minutes? No, Monsieur Griffard, would you wait in Monsieur Sargo's room? As long as you like, gentlemen. You are very polite to this pamphlet here, Monsieur de Rainy. Why not? He's done us a great service. Ah, yes, and we may suffer for it if we're not very careful. Even if we think the Marquise is guilty. Well, I'm afraid I do. Well, so do I. That's why we must be very careful not to bring her name into the trial. Apart from us, nobody must know about the Black Mass. It would cause great pain to his majesty. It would shock his subjects. And it would give his enemies in Europe a weapon which they wouldn't hesitate to use. We are not going to give them the chance. In brief, whether the accusations against the Marquis are true or false, her name must never be mentioned. Do you agree, Monsieur Colbert? Yes, yes, I agree. All the same, Monsieur, we must not lose sight of the fact that I've told the king everything I knew or thought I knew about this wretched affair. He knows about that secret ceremony the other night, and for him, that infamous mass is connected with the attempt to poison Mademoiselle de Fontange. In fact, His Majesty is waiting now for the result of the first interrogations. How are you going to deal with that, Monsieur de Louvois? There's only one way. 
We must recommend to His Majesty that Mademoiselle Dourbois is treated with mercy. What? On the assumption that she's guilty? Naturally. But, but, monsieur, that's rather rather drastic, isn't it? Can you think of a better way? I prefer a way that would assume that the Marquise and Mademoiselle Dormois were both innocent. Impossible. If we find Dormois not guilty, the king will want to know who is guilty. And we'll have to tell him. No, the crime can't be passed over. Someone must be punished. If not... The inquiries and interrogations will be intensified and the truth will out. If Mademoiselle Dormois is found guilty, it will prevent all that. And it will provide a shield for the Marquis. The obvious cause is this. Suppress the interrogations, consign Madame Voisin and her entourage to prison, and in a month, the whole affair will be forgotten. Not one single accuser of the Marquis will be left to tell the tale. Oh, forgive me, Monsieur de Louvois. There will still be one. The Abbey? And the king intends to interrogate him. Oh, the Abbey is much too clever not to fall in with our ideas. Uh, call him, monsieur, will you? Monsieur Griffard, come in now, will you? Thank you, Monsieur Dorigny. Uh, take a seat, uh, Monsieur Griffard. Thank you, Monsieur. I would like you to know what we've been talking about, Monsieur, and what conclusions we have come to. We have decided that it would be in everyone's interests to suppress the interrogations. His Majesty must be kept in ignorance of the role played in this affair by the Marquise de Montespan. Tonight, you will have the honor of being presented to His Majesty by Monsieur de la Reine. His Majesty intends to question you about the things you witnessed. Your statements to him must agree on all points with ours. By which you mean, monsieur? That you were unable to recognize the central figure of the Black Mass. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the Marquise need never be mentioned. Ah, good. I agree. But what about Mademoiselle Dormois? Now, we are coming to that. Is she going to be set free? Uh, uh, no, uh, not exactly. No, we're afraid not. Ah. If we release Mademoiselle Dormois... It would be incriminating the Marquise. In other words, you're substituting Mademoiselle Dormois for the Marquise. We are substituting a very obscure person for a very famous one. We're not asking you to swear that the woman at the Black Mass was Mademoiselle Dormois. Oh, we are only asking you to tell His Majesty that you don't know who she was. So that my ignorance may be used against Mademoiselle Dormois. Oh, your scruples are praiseworthy but unnecessary. A lie is permissible when it's dictated by higher interests. Uh, interests higher than justice and humanity? I know of none, Monsieur de Marquise. My dear Monsieur Giffard, a philosopher like you doesn't need to be reminded of the maxim of Marcus Aurelius. The general interest must supersede that of the individual. Provided it does not infringe on his life or liberty. You didn't finish the quotation, Monsieur de Colbert. Uh, you don't admit that the individual should be sacrificed for the general good. Only if the individual is willing, Monsieur de Louvois. Certainly not if it's imposed. Well, then it must be imposed. That, Monsieur... I find absolutely repugnant. Now, possibly. But your bourgeois morality can't be taken into consideration. It cannot influence the king's ministers. It could if the ministers were honest men. Oh, come, come, monsieur. You're not so innocent that you don't know that decisions sometimes have to be made for reasons of state. Now, reasons of state? Oh, I know these reasons of state only too well. I'm thinking of nothing but the safety of an innocent person, Mademoiselle Dormoise. Mademoiselle Dormoise is in no danger. We'll send her to some pleasant convent in the country, and in five or six years' time, when the affair is forgotten, we shall provide her with a generous dowry and mm. arrange a respectable marriage for her. Yes, and she will be in your debt and your power for the rest of your life. Your sarcasm is not very welcome, Monsieur. No, sarcasm. I was only reading your thoughts. You seem so concerned for this woman, monsieur. You might be her lover. I saw her for the first time yesterday. I've never spoken to her in my life. Then why are you fighting for her like this? Because she's innocent and there's no way else to fight for her. So you are persisting in your refusal. Yes, I'm persisting. That's enough. We've been patent because the king seems to attach some importance to you. But not even that can excuse your audacity. I forbid you. You understand, I forbid you to tell the king one single thing that might prejudice him against the Marquis. You must allow me, monsieur, to take counsel with my own conscience. Damn your conscience! I'm giving you orders, and you'll obey them. And that's all there is to it. I obey no orders that I consider criminal. What did you say? I say it's criminal to incarcerate this wretched girl. So you intend to tell the king? The truth, and nothing but the truth, and his majesty will act on it. 
And never will he have a finer opportunity of deserving the name great. You will not say one word to him, monsieur. You will excuse not me. Not one single word. Monsieur. Because you won't even see him. Monsieur de la Reine. The king has ordered me to bring, bring this man before him. I forbid it. But monsieur. And, and I take full responsibility. The king will be grateful to me for having saved him from an interview with a dangerous rebel. I? And a lunatic who's escaped from the garage. You take care, monsieur. Yeah? If you prevent me from seeing the king, you're preparing a case against yourself. The I do Ah, uh, the king will. Kick that man. Oh, monsieur de Kick that man to the Bastille. Why? Because I'm defending myself. To the Bastille. Clean his hands and feet to the wall. Reasons of state. And if that doesn't keep him quiet... Use the gag and the stick and put him on bread and water. And where am I to be? Put away. Later on, we'll decide whether to send him back to the garage or leave him to moulder in the dungeons. You murderer. Yeah, those are my orders. And now, let us go, Monsieur Colbert. There's nothing more to discuss. Monsieur de la Reine, you gave me your solemn oath. But whatever happened, I would be free. Yes, I'm yeah, but... free, monsieur. You gave me your promise. And here I am under arrest. It's Monsieur Louvois' order. Uh... I must abide by it. You're under arrest. Oh, I know. But uh, <laughs> every prisoner has the right to try to escape. What? <laughs> Make a dash for it. What? There, the door's open. And good luck. Ah, monsieur, I knew you'd never go back on your word. Where are you going? To Saint-Germain to see the king! <laughs> Are you sure you've mixed it properly, Gillot? Yes, madame. Exactly as I told you? Yes, madame, as usual. I'm most anxious he should have it tonight. You will, madame. I will put it over here where he's bound to see it. Madame may rest assured it will have the effect she desires. The king. Come, Gillot, this way. You'd better go back to my apartment. I'm supposed to be on duty. Your majesty, Monsieur Louvois decided that the Abbe Griffard was not a fit person to be given an audience by your majesty. He ordered me to send him to the Bastille. Monsieur Louvois countermands my orders far too often. I will not tolerate it much longer. Have the Abbe brought here. I'm afraid he's escaped, your majesty. He has quite a genius for escaping. Well, then find him. He'll be delighted to be found, I'm sure, your majesty. Hmm. Has Mademoiselle Dormoise confessed? Far from it, Your Majesty. The doctor tells me he can pass no opinion about the poisoning. All the same, Mademoiselle Dormoise would be guilty of having attended that sacrilegious mass. I have brought Your Majesty the first interrogations. Ah. They compromise a great number of people, and I've already had them arrested. But there are other people, still more important, and I would like Your Majesty's opinion before making any further move. Well, sit down, De La Reine, and let me see the results. Now, I won't waste your time with... Uh, Madame Voisin's accomplices. Excuse me, Your Majesty. Chevalier Monsieur Exeter de Trelage has a letter that he wishes to deliver personally to you. Let him come in. I have a letter, Your Majesty, from Madame de Maintenon. She asked me to wait for an answer. Give it to me. Hmm? A Monsieur Griffin, who claims to be well known to Monsieur de la Reine, is here with me now. He states that Your Majesty has expressed a wish to see him. That is our abbe, is it not? Uh, yes, Your Majesty. Hmm. He insists that it is a matter of the greatest urgency. What am I to do? Monsieur de Trelage, go and bring the abbe here at once. Uh, yes, Your Majesty. Now, Monsieur de la Reine, read me those names. With Your Majesty, uh, some of the names will be so painful to you that uh, Monsieur de Louvois thought that you should be... Monsieur de Louvois uh, is too zealous. I expect my orders to be carried out to the letter. I want the truth, the whole truth, so that justice may be done regardless of rank, title, or sex. Now, monsieur, read out those names, whoever they are. Oh, forgive me, your majesty, but I... Oh, oh your majesty, the list, monsieur. Mm. What's this? Madame la Marquise de Montespan? Yes, La Marquise majesty. would have you taken leave of your senses, man. It's impossible. But they're lies. They must be lies. Mm. We thought the same at first, your majesty. Unhappily... They are only too true. Monsieur de Colbert and I, and uh, Monsieur de Louvois, realized it as well. Ring that bell, will you? Your Majesty? 
Madame Marquise de Montespan is on duty here. Tell her I wish to speak with her at once. Uh, let her wait for me in the anteroom. Yes, Your Majesty. And Monsieur de Trelage and the Abbe Griffal are waiting to see you. Monsieur Labbe has never seen these interrogations, and yet he could corroborate them. Yes. Yes, uh, bring them in, will you? And send Madame de Marquise de Montespan to me at once. Uh, yes, Your Majesty. His Majesty will receive you, gentlemen. Uh, Monsieur de Trelage, I want you to wait in that room over there. Uh, yes, Your Majesty. Now, Monsieur Labbe. Your Majesty. Come over here, will you? Ah. Are you quite sure that the information you have given Monsieur de la Reine is accurate? If I had any doubts, Your Majesty, I would not have been so insistent on seeing you. I see. Then you insist that the person you saw at Madame Voisin's was the Marquise de Montespan? Yes, sire. If you are lying, or even if you are only mistaken, you know what the consequences will be for you. Yes, sire, I know. And I would never make these accusations if it were not to save someone who happens to be innocent. Monsieur de la Reine will tell you who that person is. Mademoiselle d'Ormoise. Have you any proof? Irrefutable proof. Give it to me. If your majesty will forgive me, the evidence would be more convincing if it were given by Madame la Marquise herself. Yes, I agree. Uh, stand over there, Monsieur Griffin, behind the curtains, out of sight. Yes, sir. That's right. Now, the Marquise is waiting in the anteroom. I will call her myself. Madame la Marquise? Your Majesty sent for me? Yes, I want to talk about this affair of Madame Boisin. You want to tell me who has been incriminated? Yes. The list is there. Look at it. <laughs> me? This is quite fantastic. Did Monsieur de la Reine bring you this nonsense? You think it amusing? Oh, you don't expect me to take it seriously, do you? I've already had a visit from some monkey bank of an abbe who tried to make me buy his silence. Was his name Griffard? Oh, might have been. I really can't remember. And what did this monkey bank say? Oh, quite a lot. He told me he was going to denounce me to Monsieur de la Reine. Hasn't he told you that he saw me at that clairvoyance? And that I took part in some unholy ceremony or other? Yes, he did tell me that. And you allowed him to say such things about me? It's my duty to listen to anyone and everything, madame. I don't expect you to listen to lies which are a slur on my character. Do you expect me to listen? Oh, it is your majesty. I really want to get that I to the go. bottom of this affair and I intend to do so. You don't believe me capable of I shall believe doing anything. whatever is proved to my satisfaction. If that abbe is lying, he will pay dearly. But if he's telling the truth... The truth? You don't think that list was compiled we'll by me or that I had any... Mr. Griffard, come here. Your Majesty. That man here? Do you expect me to bandy words with him? You must prove that he is lying and that you are telling the truth, Marquise. I won't reduce myself to the level of that lying Griffard, or whatever his name is. Keep quiet for a few moments, will you? But Your Majesty, Mr. You... Griffard, do you affirm that Madame la Marquise was present at the ceremony the other night? I affirm it, sir. What? You? You say you have proof, monsieur. Proof as positive as your majesty could want. What is the proof? This morning, your majesty, Madame Voisin's daughter dispatched to Mademoiselle de Zayer a potion destined for the Marquis. What? The girl's confession is in your hands, your majesty. The potion was prepared that night after the Black Mass had been said. And how does that affect me? Continue, monsieur. It's the potion the Marquise has been using for years. To ensure that your majesty's love for her will endure. He's lying, I tell you, he's lying. But the Marquise didn't know that Madame Voisin was plotting with the friends of Monsieur Fouquet to kill their king. What? The potion which the Marquise was to mix with your drink contained a deadly poison, your majesty. Oh, Please, my God. God. If, if, sire, Madame Voisin's daughter did not bring this potion to Mademoiselle de Zoyer, if the Marquise is not the central figure of the Black Mass, if she did not have the potion mixed with your lemon drink, then all that I have affirmed is a lie and a calumny, and your majesty can drink that lemon juice without fear or hesitation. Here is the drink, your majesty. Let me pour it into this goblet. If I have told you the truth and you drink this, you will be dead in a quarter of an hour. 
Well, madame, shall I drink it? I... I... Give me that goblet, please, sir. Here, your majesty. Well, madame, shall I drink it? No! No, stop! Don't drink it! <laughs> Monsieur, will you wait in there, please? I, I will call you later. <laughs> Well, is it true? Is it true you went to that witch voisin? You took part in that horrible mess? You mixed her filthy potions with my drink, did you? Answer me! If I did, whose fault is it? You forced me to it. If I'm guilty, you're guilty too. You deserted me and driven me to this spot. I forced you to it. But you humiliated me in front of all your other women. Oh, I know most of them were only passing fences, but oh, didn't they keep me in my place while their little reign lasted? And now it's your Fontange and your Montenor. It was to save you from them that I went to La Voisin. Oh, it's horrible. Horrible. Whatever I've done, I've done out of love for you. How was I to know they were going to poison you? Even that so-called Abbe of yours admits I was innocent of that. Read that document. Read that document. Read about the infamies you practice of that dreadful woman. I have nothing left for you now but contempt. Why not tell the truth? Why not say that you're tired of me and that you're glad to find an excuse for getting rid of me? You call the facts in that document an excuse, do you? Do you? I suppose you'd like me to retire to a convent now, like so many of your discarded mistresses. It would be one way to atone for your sin. Not in a thousand years. I've nothing to atone for, and I don't see myself as a nun. Oh, no. You still see yourself as a woman with ambitions, a woman who loved the king in me but never the man. A woman who loved the favors I showered on her, the gold I lavished on her, the luxuries the I was... The luxuries! Yes! You were proud enough of those luxuries. They all added to your glory. Why? You spent as much on me as you did on your fountains at Versailles. Oh. As for my ambition, what about yours? It's not enough for you to be flattered like a king. You have to be worshipped like a god. Hmm. Everyone who crosses your bedroom has to bow to your bed whether you're in it or not. When we're in chapel, we're all expected to turn our eyes to you rather than the altar. Well, no one can say your God has been unkind to you, can they? What? A man who expects submission to his every whim? I must ride to the hunt with you even when I have a fever. I must feed your carp in the lake at Fontainebleau a few days before my trial is born. And I must shiver in a corner because you suddenly take it into your head to have the windows flung open in midwinter. I had to clear the air from that abominable perfume of yours. Don't pretend you ate the perfume I use. Even La Montenor would say the same as I do. La Montenor would say that you are an insolent tolerant. Well, she's such a virtuous one, isn't she? There it? is no need to insult Madame de Montenor. There, there is nothing in our relationship. Oh, hasn't it happened yet? Uh, is she still keeping you in suspense? Hold your tongue. You shall be warming your bed soon enough. Old libertines always finish up the table. Hold your tongue, I say! Don't shout at me. Anyone would think I was hitting you. You will leave the court, do you hear me? You will leave here first thing in the morning. Will I? Yes. You'll settle down in a convent that I shall choose for you. Do you really think you're going to bury me alive? Me? The Marquise de Montespan? Yes, you. You will leave here tomorrow. Not tomorrow or ever. You're not going to get rid of me as easily as that. Huh? Am I the mother of your children or aren't I? Our eldest son may be king one day. If I left here, the whole world would soon be talking about it. You couldn't face the scandal. Scandal? Yes, your majesty. There's only one thing you can do. Suppress the whole affair. Get rid of that list and those papers. And in particular, get rid of this abbey of yours. If it were not for this abbey, I'd be dead by now. And as for me, I'm staying here. You... I shall retain my rank, my titles, my property, and go on receiving homage from the whole court. But as for your love, that you can keep. <laughs> History will remember me as the woman you loved in your years of glory when you were young... Handsome and victorious. And now, Your Majesty, go to La Montenor. I... Thank you for your advice. I intend to take it. Your Majesty. Light the Marquise back to her quarters. Good night. How dare she? You may come in now, monsieur. Well, your majesty. Tell me, monsieur Larini, 
Does Mademoiselle Dormoise know who the real culprit is? Uh, no, Your Majesty. Neither does my nephew. I see. And did you say that he wants to marry her? Uh, yes, Your Majesty. Very well. Bring him in. Your Majesty. Monsieur de Trelage, I have gone into this poison affair very thoroughly. Mademoiselle Dormoise is innocent. Oh, that's wonderful news. Now, I am going to give you the happy task of setting her free. Take this letter to the governor of the Bastille. Now, Your yes, Majesty. Yes, now. I must make amends to her for her wrongful imprisonment. Tomorrow, I am going to present the future Madame Trallage with a dowry of 1,000 écus, and I shall witness the marriage myself. Oh, Your Majesty, how no, can no, I... Don't say anything. Get along with you. <laughs> yes, Your Majesty. Now, there is only one witness left, the... Abbe Griffard. The man who saved your life, Your Majesty. Yes. Mr. Griffard. Sire. You know too many things that you should not know. Me, sir? I, I know nothing at all. Absolutely nothing. What exactly is the price of your ignorance? My liberty, sir. Nothing else. You may consider that enough, but I do not. Well... As Your Majesty is kind enough to insist, a position, however humble in the Royal Library, would be something beyond my wildest dream. <laughs> I think we can go some way beyond your wildest dreams, Monsieur. You are going to be my assistant chief librarian, and <laughs> that is not enough, not nearly. But it is enough for tonight. Good night, Monsieur. Good night. Good night, Good night Your Majesty. Majesty. You have been listening to Poison for the King by Victoria Sardou. This was the cast. L'Abbé Griffard was played by Hard Marion Crawford, Louis XIV, Roger Delgado, La Marquise de Montespan, Margaret Whiting, De Colbert, Ivan Brandt, Mademoiselle Dormoise, Elizabeth London, De La Reine, George Merritt, Sago, Richard Williams, Hector, David Spencer, De Louvois, Balliol Holloway, La Voisin, Betty Bascom, and Mademoiselle Desoyers, Sheila Grant. Other parts were played by Barbara Greenhalgh and members of the BBC Drama Repertory Company. The play, which was recorded, was translated and adapted for broadcasting by Norman Ginsbury and Jacques Sarch and was produced by Wilfred Grantham. <laughs>